Welcome to Science Summer Safari Teacher and Family Expeditions. Now we're just outside of Morgan Monroe State Forest. We finished the Bryant Lake hike, got in your car, drove out, turned left and came down Old 37. About a half a mile, don't miss it, there's a gravel road that says road closed and dead end. My kind of place. Turn in, park right here, because this is where we're going to get into Bryant Creek. Now I brought with me the goggles that we're going to use and two hammers from home. But you, there's a few more things you need to bring. In fact, uh, Mary, tell them what else. You're also going to watch your fishnet and your critter cage. Bug spray, hand lens, and shoes to get wet in. Yeah, shoes to get wet in. You're going to get wet. In fact, you have phones or anything valuable, wallet. I would put in a Ziploc bag because you're probably going to fall down at least once if you're lucky on this one. Hey, I'll see you down at the creek. Follow me. Be careful. Hey, be careful coming down. It's pretty slippery and it's even going to be more slippery on the water. So we have taken literally thousands of kids to this creek to catch fish and almost everybody can catch fish. But there's always that one or two student who thinks that Indiana has flying fish. And it usually sounds something like this. I can't catch any fish. And we remind them that we don't have flying fish in Indiana. If you want to catch fish, you got to put your net in the water. And if I'm a fish and I see a net coming, the first thing I'm going to do is dive under it. So if you want to catch fish, you put your net to the bottom and you drag it along the bottom, probably picking up a few rocks and then you lift it up to see what you have. That's how you catch fish. Oh, there's one. So there are about four crawdads right here. There's a couple ways to catch a crawdad. Now what I did is I put my net behind him. I'm gonna move my hand around front because they like to escape by going backwards. Let's see if I can get this guy to go right back into my net. Oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. And I lifted him up and there you go. Gotta be smarter than a crawdad. <laughs> Let's take a look at this guy up close, okay? So this is an invertebrate, a crustacean that actually uh, has uh, no bones. He has an exoskeleton and he can pinch kind of hard even at that side, but nothing to hurt you. Depends on where he pinches you. Let me hold him here. There's the perfect way to hold him by the carapace. That's the carapace. He's got a tail, he's got antenna, eyes, and he's got uh, one, two, eight legs here and his front legs, he actually has 10 legs all totaled, but the front two have been adapted into pinchers. I'm holding him by the carapace. If you hold him right here like this, you'll never get pinched. Look at his bottom. And you're gonna find thousands of these in the water. In fact, some of them about the size of your fingernail because they start out as eggs. You might find a big female carrying eggs. So this little crawdad, crayfish, an invertebrate has no backbones. There's two ways to hold them like that. Even the big ones won't hurt you. Okay, if he does pinch you, I'm gonna let him pinch you right there and we'll see what happens. Not too bad, won't hurt. On my baby finger, a little finger, it might hurt. But you can put them in your hand and they walk backwards and they flip that tail and go flying. Watch this, I'm gonna bring him down here in the water and he'll take off backwards probably. Right, here we go. You see him? Zoom, and there he goes. That's one way to catch them. Another way to catch them is just drag your net along the bottom and see what you find. Here we go, ready? I'm gonna put my net all the way to the bottom and pull, drag, pull, drag, pull, drag. I'm gonna probably pick up some rocks. And the first thing you do is you take the big rocks out of there because you don't want to hurt anything you caught. And what did I get in this guy right here? Oh, there you go. Little baby crawdad, crawfish. Beauty, let him go. So you saw how I did that? Drag along the bottom. If you don't see them, you can catch them by seeing them or just drag and see what you catch. Oh, caught another one. <laughs> this is Crawdad City. After you've had a few minutes practicing scooping fish up, you're going to find some really cool things like this male rainbow darter. The females aren't as colorful as this, but keep going because you just don't know what might be in your net. For example, these are little salamanders. Catch them, look at them, and let them go. They just won't survive outside of this creek, but they sure are cool to catch. And keep your eyes out for banded water snakes. This little guy right here is kind of nippy, but it won't hurt you. His mom, if she's around, <laughs> they do bite. But once again, they're not venomous. Okay, so now we're going to head upstream. The good thing about heading upstream is that the water is always clear because it's coming this way. 
Justin and Mary are going to show you as they go past me what we call the creek walk shuffle. So not you may not fast. be able, to, yeah, you may not be able to see the bottom because there's cracks, there's rocks. So they put their foot down and feel first and take a step and feel first and take a step and feel first and take a step. That's what we call the creek walk shuffle. It is slippery. There's moss on a lot of these rocks. If the sun's shining, there's moss. It's going to be slippery. So you're going to get wet or look for gravel bars. Walk where the gravel is and there's better footing. Creek walk shuffle. When you come to the bridge of State Road 37, old State Road 37, you go under the bridge in the creek. Now, this is a great place to find water snakes or a beautiful little ring neck snake. So there might be a snake or a salamander living under this rock. There's two ways to do it, the right way and the wrong way. If you lift it up from this side, whatever's under there is gonna come at you. So it's always better to lift it up from the front and that way you can look and you have two options. Oh, a nice worm, a beetle. If it's something you're scared of, you can just drop it back on. Lift it up like that, look underneath it. I would spend some time lifting up rocks, looking for snakes or salamanders or beetles. Great place to do it, right here. So as you're walking along doing the, a creek walk, you'll come across these layers to the side over here. This is shale. And actually this creek is actually the whole bedrock is shale. As you're walking along those solid pieces that you see, that is shale. Um, now shale is a sedimentary rock. There's layers. It was once mud, millions of years. It's been compacted into rock. Now when there are a couple ways with rock. This is a fresh jagged piece broken by man. This piece that I found in the creek, as you can see, are different edges. These are rounded. The rounded gives you, tells you that this was weathered as the water, the creek was flowing. This rock has tumbled along the way and the edges were smooth, whereas this was fresh broken and it's jagged. Hey, Justin, that's cool. That's the process of weathering, right? Yep. So here's something for you. Good job on that. Here is a piece of shale that's weathered. It's rounded. It's got a hole in the middle of it. You know what we call that? Friendship rock. A friendship rock. So I'm going to give that to you, put it on a string and make a necklace. There's your friendship rock, a piece of weathered shale, a sedimentary rock. Best it's friends for life. <laughs> hey, you know, I'll tell you another way you can tell it's shale. You want to do a field test? <laughs> lick that. Lick it. <laughs> If it tastes like mud, it's shale. Go on, try it. <laughs> no, go ahead, it's on you. <laughs> you know, you have to make sacrifice our science. Fresh break, <laughs> tastes like mud, shale. I can't believe you're gonna try it. No, you're not getting that smart. <laughs> so you're gonna come across a couple of these log jams where it's falling. Interesting thing about this, when the water's really flowing, if you're going downstream, be prepared for a deeper end on this side because the water going across will dig it out. But we're going to go upstream, so there's two ways to do it. Carefully climb over, have someone help you, or if you're young, then go like Justin is and go under it. Either way, help each other on the creek walk. We don't want anybody falling and getting a broken arm. Okay. Right in the middle. That's a water strider. They look like water spiders, but they're not. And their legs are so thin that they can actually don't break the surface tension of the water. But that's a water strider, not a spider. Pretty cool. Hard to see, but once you see them, you'll never forget them. So one of the things you're looking for here are crinoids. And this is a, a stem of a crinoid, and there's all types of crinoid pieces you'll find here. I've been coming here for so long that I've actually made this beautiful crinoid necklace. Now, a crinoid is a extinct, almost extinct. There's, there's still one species of this alive. It's called a sea lily. And if you find enough of these, you can make yourself a necklace. It's a crinoid, it's the state fossil. It's an animal, actually. Uh, and you can find part of their stalk, maybe part of their head, the calyx, and uh, their fast hold. And they're pretty cool things to find, especially if you may have enough for a necklace. But I'm also looking for something called geodes. And these are, I've collected these geodes you see down here. And you're gonna need two choices. You can either take them home and crack them, or if you bring hammers, you can crack them here. Make sure you put your goggles on because this is some pretty hard rock here. In fact, this rock is so hard that if I start hammering one of these, it goes right into the shale. 
So I brought a second hammer, and I'm gonna use that as my anvil. So now I can put one of these on here like this. Make sure you have goggles on and make sure anybody around you, because the shards from this could put your eye out. So wear your goggles. I always do a, a, a soft tap. I shake it, sounds solid. Tap, tap, tap. And each tap is harder until it breaks and let's see what we reveal. Wow, a little bit of a hole, quartz crystal. I broke this one earlier. It's got some beauty in it. This one was broken earlier. It's got some crystals in it. You'll find over 19 different minerals. You'll find some that are already broken like this guy right here. But I like to look for the nice round ones and you gotta break a lot of geodes till you find one. Let's try this guy. Tap, tap. Nice, a little bit of a, a vug or a hole right in there. Uh, here we go, see that's, that's what we're looking for. Now I gotta, oh, like this one right here, this one, I shake it, I can hear something. I guarantee you this one's hollow. So I'm gonna go easy on this one, just a few taps. Easy, easy. Wow, look at that. Now, most of that is kind of mud's got in there. There's some quartz crystals. I bet if I rinse this off in the creek, that's gonna be a beautiful one right there. So have some fun, collect geodes. You can break them here. Tap, tap. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. That's a different type of quartz. There's, there's quartz that is a hexagonal, six-sided, or this is a, like a, quoting, a coating of quartz. A lot of geodes, small ones. Tap them even less. Open them up, beauty. Indiana Beauties, geodes. Well, you could spend hours here at Bryant Creek, cracking geodes, looking for crinoids, looking for a friendship rock. We're gonna go ahead with uh, our expedition. You know, there's a lot of fish and salamanders. I'll show you some pictures of those. Hey, this is science. Try it yourself. Bryant Creek, a great place to spend the day exploring the outdoors.